All right, so you want to create your first site in Phone Sites. So here we go. All right, I'm in my dashboard here, and I'm going to select Create Site. This is easy. Name your site. Um, just name it whatever makes the most sense for you. And I'm going to call this the Hangover Pub. This is an actual place. It's pretty awesome. Um, subdomain, what is that? Uh, okay, so. When you create your own site, what you're essentially doing is you're leasing a site off of phonesites.com. Um, phonesites.com is their domain. You're creating what's called a subdomain off of their domain. So you want to try to come up with something catchy, makes sense for you and for your offer and so forth. Uh, now, with that being said, maybe whatever it is that you're trying to offer in the marketplace, like maybe it might be confusing to someone else if they see like the hangover pub dot phonesites.com, like what does phone sites have anything to do with this awesome pub that I like to eat at, huh? Um, okay, well, in a different video, I'll show you how you create a, well, not how you create a custom domain, but how you would use a custom domain. So maybe if, um, if I'm going to Hangover Pub's website, I could uh, use like a similar domain, not their domain that they're using for the site because it's already in use. But uh, anyways, then you can have your users land on this other Hangover Pub's uh, domain and then not get confused. But for starters, you gotta come up with a subdomain when you're creating a new site. So I'm gonna put in here, let me over Bob. I got that right, yeah, okay. Create a website, awesome. So let's say that someone had already used the Hangover Pub, what would have happened when I was trying to submit that? I would have gotten a red warning button at the bottom that would have said, uh, uh, sorry, this is already in use, or you know, something along those lines, or it wouldn't be the same. Uh, if I had already used it, then it would come across and say, sorry, you've already used this subdomain, but no one's using this, so it's fine. So on this page, this is your editing page for the first page. So whenever you create a new site, there's a default of one page. You can go in and add in um, additional pages afterwards. Really, you only need one to two pages max, really, honestly. Okay. So I'm going to drop into the, well, let me take a step back here. Uh, what we're looking at now is called the design page. That's where you're going to go in and add in like the headline, some text about your page, change the background color, add in a logo, add in maybe some images, uh, maybe some a carousel of images. We'll do that later in a video. Um, you can add in videos itself and then collect information. Obviously, that's the most important thing we're setting up these landing pages, right, is to try to get someone to uh, show their interest in working with you or learning more information about you. All right, so let's take a Stab this. So I'm going to drop in my YouTube video for the Hangover Pub. So uh, let me save that really quickly. I won't lose that. Um, forget that I was uh, dropping something there in Notepad. That's just for later. All right. So now I want to go. Uh, now for headline, you want to try to get really, really creative here. Um, you only have a few seconds to take the interest of this. Uh, that's landing on your landing page. Uh, I'm not going to be creative right now. I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to go out to their site. Look at their food, by the way. It's gorgeous. It's awesome. Look at that. Anyways, all right. Enough of that. It's almost lunchtime. Actually, it's lunchtime. Okay, so I'm going to be lazy. This is not exactly uh, creative stuff at all. I'll figure that out later if I want to. Um, now, subheadline. Do we have any text out here I can use? Uh, just use that. Again, I'm being lazy. Now, I'm going to change. I want the background color to be black. And my text, uh, that is going to be red. And this text is going to be white. Now, something to keep in mind where I'm checking off or where I'm selecting these colors here, you can you can be a little bit more creative. You don't have to use these options that Phone Sites gives you. Um, in a different video, I will show you how to find um, what's called hex codes. Uh, I will I'll help you find the uh, color codes that you can use, you can drop into these fields here to alter the color to get something else that maybe it matches the company's colors or something else. Anyways, I, I'm just going to go with these 
excuse me, these uh, defaults of red, white, and black. And my video, I had pulled it, actually right there, I can just copy this. I don't have to go back to Notepad. Uh, this is a YouTube video. I'm gonna go ahead and select, I right clicked it, and I'm gonna select copy video URL. And let me go back out here. And then under the content section, I'm gonna go to YouTube video, and then drop in that YouTube video URL. Nice. And uh, let's put in a logo for these guys. Huh? Copy image address. I just right clicked to get that. Let's see. I could link to the image. What I should have done, let's do that. Uh, instead of copying the image address, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save image as. That's a mess. Rename that, close that, and then I'm going to upload this. It's better to upload your images that you're using. Go to desktop. Word of advice: I, I would create a, like a default uh, folder on your computer, maybe in Drive or on the computer itself, where you store your images. Um, that way, it's nice and handy for later on. Select that. And then I need to go down and actually select the image after I've uploaded it. So I'll say use image and select save. Let's take a look at what we've got here so far. So go to view. And now, as you can see here, I need to fix my logo. It's really, really small and it's uh, left centered. Now, before I do that really quickly, I want to show you something. Notice how right now, um, the the logo and the text they all go they're all pretty much aligned except the logo at the top obviously is left aligned but um, everything seems to be centered um, the reason for that is phone size is optimized for mobile uh, like help so uh, whatever might could show up on the left and right uh, it wouldn't look right on mobile. So whenever they set up this editor, it's optimized so that uh, what you're working with is basically just like right in the center. Let me show you how this looks on my phone really quickly before we go back in and fix that logo, which is a mess. And that's a different funnel. So this is, hang on. If I was thinking properly, I would just go into my history on my phone and find this. But I'm typing this out because I'm a moron. All right, there we go. So as you can see here, it looks pretty good on mobile, right? Nice. And by the way, what you're seeing here is obviously that's my laptop's browser in the background that we were working on originally. But this window you see in the front, this is my phone that I'm projecting to my laptop. So phone sites, it's really awesome for being able to create these uh, on your phone. You can do it really quickly, really easily. It's much easier to work with phone sites than some other editor, like well, I won't say any names. Um, anyways, much easier to work with this editor on uh, your phone than other editors out there. Um, in fact, it was created to be able to do that. Um, but for the purpose of these videos, I'm going to be doing them mostly on my laptop just because it's easier for me to be able to uh, capture these videos and then be able to show you a wider picture. Um, so anyways, going back to the laptop here, I'm going to go back to my screen. So anytime you need to go back to the editor, uh, you can just, you can go back in your browser. That is if you're from the view page. If we go into preview, as you can see here, it still has, uh, uh, like the phone sites banner at the top and um, these images and so forth. So if you wanted to go back to edit, to, you're still in the design it mode. If you wanted to go back, don't select back here, like in your browser. You would select these three little dots here, and then that'll take you back to the editor. But if we clicked on view, this actually takes me directly to the site. Like notice the, the URL changing up here and everything, and you lose the phone sites uh, banner and so forth at the top. But when you're going through view mode, then you go back in your, your browser. 
All right, so let's fix that logo really quickly. And then after we're done fixing the logo, uh, I'll show you a few other things and then we'll check out how, how it's working in mobile in terms of the video and so forth. So now I'm gonna scroll down and my uh, logo here, I'm gonna change this. Um, these three options here, this changes left align, center align, and, and, and uh, right align. And I want this to be center aligned. The default is left align. And then I'm gonna change this to, uh, I don't know, hopefully medium will be fine. We'll check it out in a second. And then, um, what else? Okay, so we haven't talked about this yet, but uh, for your landing page, you wanna be able to create, or you wanna be able to collect data from these folks. So you have default options of name, email. You can select uh, phone as well, um, address, and if you wanted to add it in a new field, uh, change this to be, I don't know, what could this be? Uh, company, yeah, sure. That way, if you want to know what company it is that they're they're working for or they're inquiring on behalf of, um, well, I'll leave that there. I'll delete it later because I don't want it. Now, your button, there's going to be a submit button. That way, whenever they're completing um, the information, sending that on to you, they've got to submit it to you. You can change the text of this. You can say, let's go, or uh, I don't know. Whatever. I mean, it could be as something as like something as simple as like click here to get started or something like that, or learn more. I don't know. Books. <laughs> and then you can change the button color. Uh, do I want to make it red? I could. It's possible that someone on that site, because they see black, red, and white, they might see that button and not recognize that it's a button because it's not really standing out from everything else. Uh, green is often a high converting color for buttons. And then the button text color, I could change this to white if I want to to make it stand out a little bit better. And then let's say that you had a disclaimer, like a privacy policy or something like that. Um, particularly if you're going to be running like a Facebook ad to this page, this, uh, this landing page, you might need to put in um, a privacy policy. So you, you link that down here and then you can change your text or your text can be just about anything you want. It could be like privacy policy. But you can also get creative. It doesn't have to be about the disclaimer or the privacy policy. You can put other stuff in there. Watch some of my other videos that I have. I put in here um, some text and some emojis and so forth and some code driving uh, people to use Facebook Messenger. So if people don't want to fill out that um, form at the top, instead of filling it out and hitting submit, they can just click on a little button that, that sends them to Messenger and then they can start chatting with the business owner. Uh, another option is you could set up Calendly for scheduling. Um, what else? Uh, I guess you could probably like integrate like a menu. So like if, uh, if I were to find the Hangover Pub's menu on here, I could like, Add that in here. That way, you click on a button and it pops it up, and you can check out the menu and so forth. And if they had ordering capabilities, maybe we could set up ordering through this as well. Um, you can get pretty creative here. But for now, I'll just keep that as privacy policy. And um, I'm going to have to dig up. I have a link somewhere where if you don't have a privacy policy, um, there's there's sources out there on the internet that have like pre-created privacy policies that you can use. Uh, I haven't used it in a while. I'll have to find it, but um, you could use that for dropping in privacy policy, the other way you don't have to go and steal someone else's privacy policy or coming up with your own. And this is obviously not a legit privacy policy, but oh, and there's link. If you don't put in a link here, but you put in something in the disclaimer field, I think once you, like if, if an end user were to hit your landing page and then click on that, I think it's just gonna take you it's just going to basically refresh the page. It's going to like link back to itself. All right, save. And let's check out that image on mobile. Let's do it on mobile. Go away. I'm going to refresh this. All right, logo looks much better now. I could make it even bigger if I wanted to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start my video really quickly. I 
and I'm just clicking through to like four of this. That looks pretty good. Okay. All right. Enough of that. So then I could send in my information. Blah 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 blah. blah. And then right now this is just one page. So if I uh, hit the submit button, all it's going to do is there's going to be like a little button at the bottom, or not the button, like a little message at the bottom underneath my submit button that basically just says like form submitted. Um, if I had set up a second page, like a thank you page, and then had this page redirect to that after I've submit, then that little green bar at the bottom that would say like form submitted. That wouldn't be there. What would happen is the data would get submitted, you'd get the lead information, and then the end user submitting the information would land on that second page. And then maybe on that second page, it could be where they could call you, they could schedule an appointment with you, or uh, any number of other things, which we'll cover in other videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit this, just approved you. And aha, I did that on purpose. Um, <clears throat> the phone site site is smart enough to check to see if you have entered in a valid email address. And by valid, I mean, does it look like it's an email address? It's not actually gonna check to see if I broke the app. Um, I'll fix that in a second. The phone site's uh, app or phone site's site will check to see if a user is completing an email address that looks like it won't actually uh, correspond with a real email address. It can't check to see if the actual email address is true. It's just looking to see where if maybe you're missing the domain for the email address that was submitted. So this is connecting again. All right, so I'm gonna fix this. This is not a real email address, but if I, I didn't mean to click that. So if I just put in gmail.com, try this again. There you go, form submitted, all right. Now if I click on privacy policy, uh, that took me to, what did I type in before, google.com? Yeah, okay, so uh, apparently, the phone site's uh, site is smart enough to see that Google.com is not a proper URL for a disclaimer. So let's see what happens if I take out that www. I don't know what happens. It still says it's uh, not proper, but I'll put in um, something else. So here we go. Refresh this. So now it'll load the page where I have the privacy policy updated. There we go. Okay, so there. The link took me to this privacy policy. All right. All right. Let's close that. Get this out of the way here. Uh, what else? Okay. So now that we got this first page created, it's all saved. Looks pretty good. Um, obviously, you do want to make a, a number of changes to like make this more creative and <laughs> put in something that would actually entice someone. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back out here and I'm gonna add a new page. And I'm not gonna go through all the steps for this one, but I'm just gonna pick a template. So there's a few templates already uh, started out here. So this one's pretty cool because you can have uh, the user call you right through this page here. So let's just go ahead and view this. And if I were to click on this, it's gonna call this 215-260-1111 number. In a separate video, I will show you how you wanna set that up to go to your phone number. But for now, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.